श्रीराम जय राम जय जय राम ओ श्रीराम जय राम जय जय राम ओ राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओ various other things we have also formed a concept on sadhana these are all sadhana these are all non sadhana you know? so here papa is making us to think about it he is not here praying you should make me to chant you should make me to meditate you should make me to do this you should make me to do that no 
He said, be watchful of every moment of his existence. Every thought, every word, every deed. How is it possible? So let us try now. How to make it a reality. All these things have been elaborately uh, explained by Papa. But still again for our Hammering the truth, you know. So, first of all, we keep on hammering the truth that he is seated within and is behind every thought, every word, every deed. Somehow we have to keep on seeing about it. Then only this is possible, you know. There is no particular quality for a thought, quality of thought is there. Every thought. Every act, every word. Because he is praying, Ramdas is praying to Ram, the sense of individuality is praying to the indwelling reality, that let no thought, word or deed which are unworthy, which are not acceptable to the Lord, it should not come. And be, be a watchdog for the entire thing, you know. And finally he says, let all the thoughts, words and deeds of Ramda come from that stage, not from the, not from the individual's platform. In short, let Ramda's acts, words and thoughts emanate directly from the meditation of thy divine self. So firstly we keep on hammering the truth that he is seated within us and he is behind every thought, every word, every day. Second, we keep praying that since everything is originated by you, kindly enabled me to demolish the wall between the labeled sadhana activities and the labeled non sadhana activities. That is spiritual and mundane. I am convinced that this alone will gradually make me a sadhaka for 24 hours. So, unless and until I demolish this, immediately after this session, we are back to our own same field, you know. So, when we enter the same field, Somehow we should, we are praying to him, give me that dimension so that I don't see it as a separate one. So that the disconnection will not be there. Now there is a total disconnection, to be blunt. And it's a tough job because we have not trained our mind. It's all said and done, still there is a wall. This is spiritual, this is unspiritual. This is spiritual, this is mundane. This is sadhana, this is vyavaha. So we keep praying, keep praying, that since everything is originated by you, because the first prayer was, you are behind every thought, every word, every deed. That means everything has been originated by you only. When that is the case, where is the question of uh, sadhana, non-sadhana, mundane, spiritual? And I am convinced about it. If this comes true, then I become a sadhana, sadhana for 24 hours. So during all my waking time, you know, Whatever I do, I do it as a, as a part of my talent. Any work, any thought, any work. I just say it is difficult, but this we should keep, keep on with. The conducive atmosphere for developing those ennobling thoughts is when I am to myself, meaning solitude.
Because this, that is the, that is the place where nobody, though you are there in every form, you are not coming there to disturb me. Until I get grounded, please don't disturb me. Because the moment I, I see your form, in the form of an object or a person or a situation, I immediately forget about your presence there. I am dealing with them as a separate entity. Then again I try, you know, when I sit for Ram Nam, when I do that, again I try. But there is a discussion there. So until I get this grounded, enable me to have solitude. By solitude we don't mean we are going out in the cave, you know. By solitude we mean wherever we are, we are if you, you enable me to, 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 to set apart a particular time where I am only with you. And then the next step is to have communion with you. Then I play it out, then I can play it, you know. When I am not disturbed by any of your creation and you are there. Many a times uh, you have presented yourself with sufficient param. Many a times we may, we may put all our complaints, you know, grumbling, everything. Yesterday I tried my level best to be with you, but you caused so many disturbances that I was not able to. This is not fair. Just like we say everything to our parents or a teacher, we bear our hearts, no? With all its limitations, with all its, you know, we don't have to say that uh, we have to first clean and then go, no. Heart to heart, you know, communion. Suddenly I find uh, he is very near to me. And then Proportionate to the intensity you gave me, you also make me feel of your presence, glimpses of your presence. In the form of intuition, in the form of anything. A pleasant feeling wells up. Many a time that it also comes to a form of a guru or a god soul or a Nishta Devata. Somehow, no, from the from the nearness to the glimpses of presence and then when I start, when you start giving me that opportunity, naturally I uh, effort will be there to get myself stabilized in it. And the moment I open the eyes and start dealing with everything, slowly, you know, enabled me to develop that nothing or nobody is irrelevant, nothing or nobody is insignificant, nothing or nobody is unimportant, because everything and everyone have come into being because of you to work out your will through those creations. This is how I become harmonized. Just like you have assigned me, you gave me a body, mind, intellect, you facilitated so many things, and you have made me to talk to you. Similarly, you have sent every of your creation with a particular assignment, but not their assignment. Your assignment to them. So when I develop this, you know, I will not find fault with anybody. I will be able to harmonize with your creation. Truly, you know, this, this will enable me to see you in it. And 
And once they start seeing you, you know, the next outpouring will say that. That you 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 become a non entity. You become one with. You become a non entity, no? Dev Krishna, we were reading, you know, Swami Vivekananda when when he gave him the glimpse. And Ramesh Bhagavan, when he gave him the glimpse of the universal vision, he cried, you know, what are you doing? I have a parents. <laughs> that means, you know, you're losing the sense of individuality. Height of, height of that, and he says, you know, in his next uh, outpouring, he says, O Ram, save thy child, thy slave. Let every fiber of his being thrill to the music of thy madness. The very blood of his veins rush impelled by the fury of thy madness. His very bones scatter and shatter in their seed by the repeated blows inflicted by thy madness. His whole frame quiver, tremble, shake by letting fall on him an avarice of thy madness. O, rise, rise, O Ramdas, fly above all. Soar in the heaven, mingle in the flood of light, pour down by the glorious sun. Let the pure, rarefied air above encircle you all around. Let space itself swallow you up. Who are you then, Ramdas? Ramdas is nowhere. Ramdas now is no mere madness. In everything, truth, the great truth, Ram hath devoured you. You are no more, no more, no more, Om Shri Ram. How he builds up, you know, talks. Because uh, the, these four words, you know, it, it should get imprinted in our heart. These are the four steps. When Gandhiji wrote, uh, my experiments with the truth, he gave it to Vinopaji to go through. Because he is the Adhigari to certify according to Gandhiji. Religiously, you know, he went through and gave back. So, Babuji asked him, is that all right? You know, but you know what he said? You will after only truth. Truth will not harm anybody. Whether they agree it or not, that's a different thing. Whether they can practice it or not, that's a different thing. But what you are telling is only truth. And it will not do any harm to anybody. Immediately like a child, Gandhi was thrown very happy and said, this is what I want. He should not harm anybody. Because, ultimately, immediately he showed this, we have to become a big fear. So, physically we may be an entity, but we are, we, don't, we no longer, we no longer exist as an entity. Our identification with the co-creation becomes complete. Their care, their concern, it occupies our spite, mind space. Accepting for the basic, you know, basic aspects of existence, the me and mine is not there. To separate us from the rest of the creation. Because so long as we are embodied as hell, we need food, little food, okay, not very costly food, barest minimum. When we are thirsty, we need water to drink. When we feel like going to toilet, you know, we have to have bath urine, we have to take bath. Like the basic things are there. 
to maintain this resident pure. That also we are not pampering, it is keeping our residents neat and clean. Because we are aware he is residing. So outwardly an individual exists, but for all practical purposes the individual does not exist. This is the fourth state. So this is what Papa and I have built up, you know, in these four quotations of outpouring. All outpourings are thought provoking. But this is really, you know, taking us to the first he said there are two ladders. He has opened up. Ram has opened up two ladders for us. And we are on a platform where there are, there is an upward going ladder, a downward going ladder. If we choose to go upward, we are moving towards Him. If we are moving towards downward, we are moving away from Him. So all of our negativity, separation, Whatever the attributes of me and mine are there, no? Prejudices. Likes and dislikes. Everything. Whatever, whatever that alienates me from the rest. That keeps me away from him. And the more I, you know, when I keep on Expanding my love circle, <coughs> remembering him, remembering that he is watching my every thought, every word, every deed, I become very careful, vigilant, and then I slowly start climbing up. These are what was first he said. Then later on, he said that, make me thine and thine only, you know. Completely. And ensure that all his thoughts, all his words, all his deeds are in conformity with your idea. That enables us now to think that the moment the session is over, I must try. Now we need, now we said, not for a later. Till I go to bed, whatever I do, whatever I think, whatever I talk, is it in line with this? Or is it, uh, is it, uh, is it influenced by the me and my thing? God, he says, this is the yardstick. Let Ramdas's acts, words and thoughts emanate directly from the meditation of thy divine self. So not from me and mine. So from today onward let me try. Everyone should feel that. It, it is difficult. It is difficult because we are not applied. Still we feel these are all sadhana, these are all non-sadhana. That is the biggest challenge. But this particular uh, outpouring, it opens up new new vista. Let's think about it, please. In quest of God, the entire 37 chapters were highly, highly, highly inspiring. But to cap it all, no? He has brought this outpouring. Decoction, no? The sense. Through simple words, he is giving us clear cut direction. So we will, for the sake of, uh, we will uh, go through the point once again. Day before yesterday, Virat Papa is outpouring, drew us to a very important aspect of sadhana. That is how to extend the sadhana concept to everything we think, everything we talk, everything we do. 
Firstly, we keep on hammering the truth that he is seated within and is behind every thought, every word, every deed. Nowadays, we don't remember, you know. A building needs a site. Though we do not generally become aware of the site after the building is constructed. In order to understand these words, you know, we need the white background. The letters are projecting, you know. But we hardly recognize the base, white you know, in the page. A pot needs mud or any other material to be made into a pot. But seldom do we recognize the base material when we look at the pot. We can dance or move or jump or run only on a solid base ground, you know. But we do not see the stage or the ground on which such movement takes place. This is a huddle. These are all truths. But still I am not aware. I am not conscious of it. So immediately when we come out of our flat, just think about it. No? When you read a book, when you see the letters, just think about the background, the whiteness, the paper. We are not so far noticed. When we walk, suddenly we remember, you know. If the earth on which we walk, that also walks, will we be able to reach the place? No? There is a movementless substratum called the earth, on which all these movements are taking place. So similarly, if you are not there, thoughts cannot come. If thoughts are not there, no action is possible, no word is possible. So you are So how can there be a difference then? So firstly we keep on hammering the truth that he is seated within and he is behind every thought, every word, every he is substratum. That Brahmanana uh, what was that word? Niradhara Surupoham Sarvadaroha Mevada. He says I am, I am, I, I, I don't, I, I am, I don't have any support, but I am supporting everything. Many a time we have said, you know, Papa used to say, read some slogans. Because the sense have been kept in a, in two words, three words. Easy to remember. So, he, so then uh, he is seated within and is behind. We keep praying. Since everything is originated by you, kindly enable me to demolish the wall which I have erected between the labeled southern activities and the labeled non southern activities. Enab I cannot do it by myself. Enable me. That means every time when I talk, you must make me, hey, what are you talking? From inside you should you guard me and tell me. When I go off the, off the line, when I cross, please pull me up and tell me. It is not in conformity with what you wish. Your will. If you do like that, then I get convinced that I will be able to become a sadhaka throughout my waking state. 24 hours out of sleep, I don't have. Sleep and dream is not in my hand. But waking state is definitely in my hand. But throughout that waking state, I will be able to become a sadhaka. Because the entire thing, you know, I, I, I become aware. If you, if you enable me to do that. 
And I, I, I also now realize because of your prompting that if I have to develop this attitude, I must do, resort to solitude. Every day I should resort to solitude. Ten minutes, five minutes, you know, twenty minutes. Preferably early in the morning. Where I am with yourself only. It is possible for me to go out, be in the green park, or just when I walk, I can be with you. I will not be talking to anybody. Solitude. And then, solitude leads me to the communion with you. Where I can download everything for you, whatever is in my mind and seek your correction, guidance, direction. And slowly that will give me the a glimpse of your nearness I start feeling because then only I, I talk to you and you talk, you reply. Then that will first give me the feeling of nearness, then the glimpse of your presence And then you have assured me that that will truly help me to identify that everybody is there in everybody. Because you know by your experience, I know by my experience, that there is nobody, nobody, no outside factors are there for enabling me to have you and your communion. No external factors are there to feel your nearness and presence in me. When I realize that this is the case with everybody, so I try to see you in everybody. In other words, harmonize with your creation. And then I am thrilled at the goal you have pointed out. But when, when we move towards that, when we get stabilized in that, you become one with. I become one with the entire of your creation, losing my sense of separate entity. In the sense, I am free from all binding. Suddenly, you know, the, the what do you call it? Not. That is untied. And I become free. So, kindly enable me to do that. Ultimately, now you have convinced me that these are the four steps. Nearness, presence, seeing you everything, 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 and finally to become one with you. All these thoughts have been triggered because of the of your outgoing. Before we move to the next uh, outgoing, one devotee wanted to us to read again Vinobhaji's words on Ramana. So today we said we will do it. So be- before we read Gan- Vinobhaji, one episode in his life you would like to share. Well, it is better to have some background about him before we go through his message. It was around 1930-31. You know, Baba was spinning yarn on a chatka as he taught me. This was written by Kalyan Bajaj, you know, Jamlal Bajaj, grandson or something. So, he was working, he was doing our secretarial job for Vinobhaji. So, he has pointed out. Vinobha was spinning yarn on a chakka as he talked to him. Someone brought the day's letters. 
I could recognize one of the letters of Babu's, Gandhiji, from its appearance in the handwriting of the actress. We know I read the letter once, tore it to pieces. His usual practice was to read his letters and destroy them later when he replied to them. He did not have to read the letter again for preparing the reply. It was meticulous. I was, I was familiar with his treatment of his letters, but this was Bapu's letter. You know, I had torn it without bothering about the reply. I was curious to know the contents of the letter. I took the pieces of the letter, put them together and read it. I was amazed. Bapu had written to Baba, you know, Vaji, referring to some incident, I have never come across a great soul like you. <laughs> People preserve even routine letters of Babu with much care. I was angry with Baba. He calls me Minobaji Baba. For the way he treated this letter with such an important remark, in an agitated mood, I asked him, why did you tear this letter? Baba said calmly, our dear and elderly people also err out of carelessness or affection. It is not correct to preserve it. It is an element of delusion and even violence. Again, with much excitement, I asked Baba, Who are you to decide that Babu has erred? See the relationship between them. No? Babu said again calmly, Babu had seen millions of people. Many of them would have been great divine souls. Babu might not have recognized them as such, or even having recognized them, he might have forgotten to register. By his neglecting to remember, there will be no decrease to the greatness of the source. That means, that one's greatness is not dependent upon uh, the certificate given by somebody. Na? It's the truth. You know? Bapu wrote like this about me out of affection or due to delusion. He has heard in this one should recognize this. Where is the need to preserve it? Again, he did not see it. How do you say it is a lab? He might have written after due deliberation. Baba said, even if it might be true, what is the advantage to me? <laughs> it would only boost my ego. Why preserve such a useless thing? I said, it is the writing of a great man like Babu, even if it refers to you, it is not your property. It belongs to the world. What right do you have to destroy it? Nobody explained. Such talk rises from one's delusion. Moha. <laughs> Attachment. Affection is the main part of the letter. I acknowledge this. I gain by destroying the rest of it. I gain by destroying the rest of it. If what he wrote about me is the truth, it would not have, it would not be destroyed by my tearing of the letter. Truth prevails. But if it is delusion, it is it is better destroyed. Preserving it is harmful. When Papa says, you know, talk, watch every thought, every word, every deed of me, you know. There, there, there is no question of me and man. It was a test, you know. It was a test given by God to Vinobhaji. And he passed the test. Because to him there is no entity called Vinobhaji. Though he is moving about, he is talking about everything, there is nothing for him to preserve because he, that the individual entity is not there. There is a lot of connection between Papa's uh, outpouring and uh, you know what. One more episode. On August 22nd, 1957, eh? Achha, five days after the coming, oh, 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 achha, achha. 
five days after coming to Ananda just two days prior to my entry into Karnataka, I was sleeping inside a mosquito net. Suddenly I felt a sharp sting. Thinking that it might be a scorpion, I got up and shook out the building. The poisonous scorpion fell out. The pain of the sting was so intense that I could not sit still. I had to keep walking to and fro. This might have gone on for four or five years, five hours. After that I lay on the bed. Tears started trickling from my eyes. One of my companions thought that they were due to pain. And he was consoling me. I told him I was fine. And that my companion should go to sleep. During those five hours, I had been inwardly repeating a Sanskrit prayer to myself. Nanyat praha rikubade kadeh nideye satyam vadamita bhavan akilandaratma Bhaktim prayacha regubungava nirbharamme kamadi dosha rehidam guru maharatamcha prasida dhamaya. O oh God, this is the important part. The so things are okay. Every day we should remember this. In our prayer every day, you know, we, we bring in so many dimensions. But what happens to us? He says the meaning is, O oh God, give me devotion. Cleanse my, cleanse me of my fault. Let me be without sin. O thou, thou, O thou who dwells in the heart of all, this is the desire of my heart. What is the desire of my heart? Cleanse me of all devotion. Give me devotion. Cleanse me of all the fault. Let me be without sin. I have no other desire. O oh God, I am speaking the truth. That I have, I have no other desire. Randy, you know, but right. But in reality, as I repeated those words, I did have another desire. I longed for the pain to, pain of the sting to subside. But I was telling, I am speaking the truth. But in reality, I was lying. In fact, that was my ego. At last I cried aloud in my mind, How long are you going to torment me? Testing me. Why are you making me to say untruth, you know? Through the sloga you make me to say that I have no other desire, but at the same time I have the desire to get myself freed from the pain. This is not correct. Why are you tormenting me? When that harsh cry came, suddenly all of my pain disappeared completely. I felt as though I was in God's deep embrace and my eyes overwhelmed, overflowed with tears. Ah. After that, within two minutes, I fell asleep. I experienced God through this quality of kindness. When Papa talks about this uh, communion, no? here is another instance where we, how God corrects us, you know. How we take God into task and because of that how we get corrected. These are all clues for Sarasa like us, you know. After reading this, whenever we go to Ashram, Vajan Hall, Whenever we hear uh, the prayer, we read every day. O oh, Lord of the universe, O oh, creator, protector, destroyer of the world, I come in all humility to thy holy feet and surrender myself entirely to thee. Suddenly, you know, there is a pull in, inside. What are you talking? Have you surrendered? Then why are you telling that I have surrendered completely? You have not surrendered anything. In you, the me and mine is fully powerful there. And still you say in front of Papa, the 
that I come in all humility to thy holy feet and surrender myself entirely to thee. So here now we, we, we can pray like this. God gave me devotion, cleanse me of all, right? let me be without sin. This is the only desire. I am speaking the truth, but I am not speaking the truth. I was lying. In fact, that was my ego. So this is the background, not two episodes. Somebody is expected. Is it already not? No. Somebody has to say 4.30. Yeah. So then, uh, yeah, we will go to the... This is the last week of my Kerala Yatra. I will go to Mysore State by the end of this week, leaving Kerala where I have spent nearly 18 weeks very happily. I am indeed happier that at the end of my tour in Kerala, I could come here to Arandashram. This ashram seems to be linked with the whole of Bharat. The whole world. Why? Nay, the whole world. But what is more important is that this ashram is situated in Kerala. In Kerala, enthusiastic workers have pledged themselves to Dharmakarya. Behind them, spiritual power, the power of love is necessary. Such spiritual power should reach every worker or organizer and institutions like Anandashram can, I feel, do that. There is a reference in the Upanishads which can be given here as an example. In the morning, birds come out of their nest, go to distant places. After finishing their work, they, they return to their nest in the evening. So these nests give shelter to these birds that wander about for the whole day. So also such institution at this ashram will prove to be shelters for the workers in Buddha and field. Those who are in need of spiritual aid and inspiration can come here and have them. Those who are here can also go out even when their services are sought and give guidance. In this way, public workers in Kerala can be connected with the, with the spiritual institution. It is a God's will that at the end of my tour here I was able to visit this ashram. That is how I feel. In the world there is nothing but God's will working. In the world there is nothing but God's will working. But we say God's will works in certain cases and in certain other cases we think we do the one. Still there are certain things about which however much the ego may claim to be its own, we cannot say that we do the one. Thus, I cannot say that I came here of my own will. There was a talk that I was to go from Kedichari to my food diet. But at last it so happened that I had to pass this way, visit this place. You all know that the present world situation is unsteady. Science is considerably advanced. With this advancement, people should be able to draw strength and happiness from it. But it is used now for destruction. Fire can be used for cooking and other constructive purposes. At the same time, it can be used for destruction also. Fire itself is non-moral. So is science. It can therefore be used and misused. The wise will use it for happiness, the ignorant for destruction. Why is this destruction going on today? Heaps of atom bombs have been manufactured. Still more are being got ready. But when, when they will be used for war, you can be sure that they will destroy the whole humanity. But until the war starts, these bombs do not remain quiet. Scientists go on experimenting with them. They explore them for tests on some distant hill or island or desert. The result of such experiments, however, spread far from the places where they are conducted and are not beneficial for mankind. For the whole atmosphere is contaminated. As a result of the radioactivity produced by such tests, scientists say that even the children of future generations will be unhealthy, undeveloped. Some of them will have their eyes or ears not functioning, so they, be, they will be angahina. I read something in the papers today 
the car of Pacific Ocean, some experiments of atom bomb are going on. As a result of that, the whole world atmosphere is being poisoned. Thus, it is reported that a large number of fishes were found dead in the Lake of Kashmir. Scientists say that the fishes died on account of some radioactivity in the atmosphere and the fall of radioactivity rain in the lake. This is a wonderful thing. See where the explosion took place, where the fishes died. It is clear that the whole atmosphere is being badly poisoned by the nuclear test. And these people are multiplying their farms. In India, our ways are different. Today in this ashram, I saw a different heap. I was taken to the ashram library, office, other building. There is a room, the Ramnam Japam Ejna Mandir, where there are a number of cupboards full of Ramnam box, books. I remember that when I was young in Baroda, there was a Murti of Hanuman near our school, and students every day, Saturday, every Saturday, used to write Ramnam on strips of paper and paste the paper strips of the body of Hanuman. Thus every student pasted a strip on Hanuman, and over that Sinduram was near. Again, Ramnam paper, paper strips were pasted on it. It went on and went on. You would have to call it children's play. I saw today the same play here. The Ramnam Mandir here is a treasury which contains the papers on which Ramnam is written. What will be the result of it? The atmosphere will be filled with pure, sweet, atoms of nectar everywhere. Unlike the explosion of the atom bomb that caused the death of the fishes of the distant lakes of Kashmir, these Ramnam books will surcharge the atmosphere with the nectar and give peace and joy even to the people of America and other countries who make the atom bomb. This is the way of our mad India. This sort of madness is possible only for Indians. Lin Yu Tang, a great Chinese writer, says that from ancient times, India has been a God-intoxicated land. The same madness continues even today and it is surely an honor to India. In other places, atom bombs are piled up and are increasing. While here, Ramnam books are piled up and their number is increasing. You may wonder how this paper on which Ramnam is written can stand against atom bombs. By the explosion of an atom bomb, not only the papers but the writers of Ramnam will also perish. So how can Ramnam help? Some may ask. But our faith is one from it is such faith that power, sorry, it is such faith and power that have saved India so far. Otherwise India would have been long ago vanquished by foreign invaders. Rome has been conquered, Greece too has been conquered and their samskara cultures have all been buried. But India still lives and remains free and their samskara also still remain alive and continue to flourish. India has withstood many foreign invasions. The Atma or soul of India has never been conquered by anyone. That is why I was happy to see here such a madness for Ramana. So I feel that uh, such spiritual power can help our Buddha and our also. The power that Ramana produces will help all activities. Ramana is a savior to all. Still, it may show some partiality. Just as Ramji may have helped Hanuman or Bharata more, Shankara has explained this in his commentary on Bhagavad Gita. Brahman is impartial like fire, but we see that those who are very near fire get more heat than those who are far away from it. This is not the fault of the fire, but only of those who keep themselves far away. The fire is impartial and impartial. So he is Ramana. Here we remember Papa puts in a nearness. Nearness is the first stage. Here he says, when we are near the fire, then we will, if we are away from the fire, we may see the fire, but we will not have the privilege of getting the warmth of it. During extreme winter, in highly elevated places, and then we, are, we have all in our childhood experienced this. Early morning we have a campfire, no? and we all sit around it. To farm or not, farm up or not. So we go very near. Not too near, then we get burnt. But we know where to stop. But the nearness is felt. 
So that is what he is pointing out. I have often said that Ramnam is a vote for world peace. Ramnam is not merely a vote. Ramnam produces a spiritual radioactivity which spreads the atoms of nectar for the good of the world. Whole world. Ramnam counteracts the power of atom bound. The power of Ramnam is the power of Parmeshwara himself. It is, it, hence it has become Brahman, the arrow of Ram, whose power is unfailing. There should be a synthesis of Karma Yoga and Bhakti. Karma Yogi must have the humility to take the help of Bhakti. Bhakti Mada should have the love to give the proper nourishment to Karma Yoga. Bhakti is the mother, Karma Yoga is the child. The mother fulfills the great task through the son. Son gets his nourishment from the mother. This union is taught in the Gita, in the dialogue between Arjuna and Krishna. I expect such union of Bhakti and Karma Yoga in this fashion. Again, let me say that it was by God's will that at the end of my journey, I and the Buddha and Bhakti came here. Let us realize the divine purpose that underlies this incident. I do not want to take your time by lengthening. Then he talks about meditation for five minutes. So this is how he, he just awakens us, you know. Say for yesterday we said, you know, those who are staying in the ashram, those who often come to the ashram, they might have gone to the uh, uh, office building, they might have passed through the office building, they might have gone inside the office, the library, the Ramnam Bank. But not that we don't recognize, we may not develop that kind of respect because we say, yeah, it's all there, the Ramnam Bank is there, no, less on it. But now we find, no, it's a reservoir, it's a treasury. Treasury where, you know, the atoms of peace, it is piled up there. And uh, whose effect will reach out to everywhere in the world. That is why Mataji probably named it as Nami Yajna for world peace. Yeah, so one, we have already covered one, uh, so, Oram, say, say thy child. Again, we are back to outpourings. That every fiber of his being thrill the music of thy madness. Same word, you know, whenever you use madness, positive madness. The very breath of his veins rushed impelled by the fury of thy madness. You are behind my circulation. His very bones scatter and shatter in their seeds by the repeated blows inflicted by their madness. Moment. No? His whole frame quiver, temple, sorry, tremble and shake by letting fall on him an avalanche of madness. Om Shri Ram. Rise, rise, this is very important. Rise, rise, O Ramdas, fly above all, soar in the heavens. Mingle in the flood of light, pour down by the glorious sun. Let the pure, rarefied air above encircle you around. Let space itself swallow you up. Where are you then, Ramdas? Ramdas is nowhere. Ramdas is now mere madness, an airy thing. Truth, the great truth, Ram has devoured you. And you are no more, no more, no more. Om Shri Ram. So let us all keep this alive in our mind. Tomorrow we will share more thoughts. Hey, Om. Om Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram. Om Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram. Om Shri Ram Jai Ram.